one of the things that I have the group do is check in with each other and talk about one thing that's going well, one area of their life or area of challenge, if you will, uh, whether it's personal, professional, or both, and then answer the question of what I need from this group today is. And the rationale behind that is for many of us, especially as women leaders, we have this tendency, or let me say this correctly, we have been carefully taught not to need or want or even express that we have a need. We just sort of move on and, and, and support everyone else as they're doing what they need to do without expressing what we need. And one of the things that I hope is commonplace to this program is being able for each and every one of you to have the space to say what you need from the women in this remarkable program and understanding that there is someone in that room, if at the very least they can hear you, they can empathize with you, maybe give you emotional support, while on the other side, there may be those, if it's a tangible need, who can support you in getting that need met. So when you have the opportunity to come together in a group, do a quick check-in. What's going well? What is an area of challenge? Or even a failure? Because that's something that we, obviously with the nature of this particular session, is being able to articulate those areas where you tried and you didn't quite get right where you want it to be, or if it was a setback and it hurt, being able to have a safe place to articulate that is important. And then following up with what you need, and it could be directly connected with their area of challenge. After the group checked in with each other, what we did was we got into a rich discussion about what each woman was taught about failure. And what we did is uh, I gave a brief description of what uh, Webster's dictionary defines as failure, what Webster defines as success, while also leaving space for everyone to talk about what they learned, whether implicitly or explicitly, whether it was at home, whether it was in the workplace about what it means to fail. What not only does it mean, but how other people around them dealt with failure and how it was communicated as well as success. It's really interesting to take a moment and reflect on what were the messages, whether intentional or not, that you learned about failure and success. And then this is the part that's really important, is realizing that you have the power to redefine what both of those experiences are for you at this particular point in your life. Once you've had an opportunity to sit down and redefine and redesign what failure and success look like to you now, you can then begin thinking about what your process will be when you're making that transition from a failed experience towards success. And in the next section, I'm gonna talk about transition theory.